friends uh, uh, poetry live is again here hope you are able to see me online today we are having uh, three poets and they are quite eminent poets from malayalam english gujarati so first we are going to have uh, manasi is one i am just new to this instagram so facing multiple challenges of <laughs> being with you and at the same time retain my sanity at home a home which is locked down from all sides so what i'm going to do i will uh, you know i will uh, introduce you to k sachidanandan who doesn't need introduction but those who are not uh, known to sachidanandan or not familiar with sachidanandan sir we call him sachida and uh, he is uh, is india's uh, leading eminent poet critic and public intellectual sachidanandan uh, is author of 34 anthologies 35 prose collections two plays and recipient of 53 prestigious awards in india and abroad sachida was recently awarded the tata literature life poet laureate award for 2019 those uh, who have seen sachida i'm sure they will be delighted to hear him again here online at poetry live uh, and then we have priya sarukai chabaria she will be reading from her latest book calling over water priya is uh, also internationally reputed poet translator and founder editor of poetry at sangam and i'm sure she will stun you with her strange light and wonderful verses and then we are introducing bringing here award winning gujarati poet and editor of poetry india udyan thakkar ji udyan thakkar ji is quite well known for combining what i call magical surrealism with in inventive realism so friends uh, uh, please uh, catch us while we are online all of us together hope you are able to see me properly before uh, you know uh, i invite sachitanandan ji and uh, take you through his brilliant surrealist uh, poetry and also a little conversation about uh, our contemporary crisis the crisis that we are facing with regard to invisible enemy corona virus and the impact of corona virus on poets and writers especially on literature let me begin this session with a small poem of mine a little poem which is quite old but i think this poem will entertain you and this poem is about bengal famine and you know that bengal has and eastern india has been witnessing series of famines in the past and also uh, eastern india is known for witnessing haiza plague malaria all kinds of diseases uh, that some some of us may not be familiar with uh, because these days all of us are talking about corona virus so let me just read this a small poem the grandpa poem from my collection my grandfather's imaginary typewriter the grandpa when summer has sprouted the earth gave birth to roasted wheat seeds leaping in sorrow the sleepy border village once told me a story in spite of great famine the goose and cat were friends one impatient morning they decided to go to village market to buy balloons for their birthday celebrations three grumpy high ranking crows pretending to guard the village from enemies planted a trap for them but grandpa but the grandpa knew all the old tricks he hit the goose and the cat in his magic hat and smuggled them out of the country when the monsoon sang in chorus when the monsoon sang in chorus the village pond giggled with fresh faces in surprise in surprise grandpa invited everyone to the party except the crocodiles and monkeys 
the goats welcomed the guest the frogs danced on the floor the honey bees served the beer the leopard came happily as an invited guest and ate three fat watermelons ha 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 but this ha 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 let me begin the session you know with sachita sachita nandan ji our mentor teacher and eminent poet sachita nandan ji let me invite him to instagram stay with us i'm taking little time yeah yeah to invite him us together sachida ashwini here can you see me sachida hello ashwini yeah uh, sachida <laughs> can you see me is a new experience sachida yeah yeah hope you are enjoying enjoying this experience sachida because times have changed yeah, okay or okay, perhaps okay. change or or perhaps changing sachida can you yeah. see me clearly sachida can hello can you see me now yeah yeah can you hear me yeah i can hear you yeah and you can see us also i can see you yeah wonderful sachida so you know i have already introduced we are now live on instagram welcome to poetry yeah. live sachida i would like you yeah. to speak a few words about uh, you know this whole experience of corona and its impact on poets and writers how do you feel at home you are locked down you have been through all kinds of you know social emergencies in the past uh, i'm told you know when i look back uh, you know at your life journey and also your writings uh, you have been through multiple you know you have seen uh, you know the country going through multiple crises but what is this crisis you know what is the difference between the crisis for instance emergency today there is uh, what i call unannounced uh, communism we are all equals at home how do you look at this experience oh my so uh, yeah in a sense i am not quite uh, new to this kind of experience because uh, you know after retirement i have been mostly you know sitting in my room writing and reading uh but then uh, two things i miss badly one is uh, the regular walk i take in the park nearby and the okay. second is certainly the travel i mean i i used to travel, travel. a lot as you very well know travel and read uh, poetry uh, give lectures in kerala in other parts of india outside india and the last time it was for the struga poetry festival in macedonia so i okay. do miss those travels even though i don't want to travel frequently now but i do want to travel and that's what i really miss and i also am very sad about uh, things happening around me whose news i keep getting especially about the migrant workers and you know i'm extremely concerned with those people who don't have a roof over their head and who who find themselves absolutely shelterless and orphaned so sachida i just received a message from ashok bajpayee ji he feels that at home he feels impoverished you know life is so impoverished you know so how do you feel i guess you know migrants have shown us and exposed us to a deep flaw in our society would you agree with that uh, i do in a sense because uh, you know it gives you time for uh, meditation it gives you time for introspection and retrospection and uh, it of course uh, gives you time to read the many books that you have but you have uh, never um, read completely even if you have read it partly and it also gives you time to write because now i have begun also to write some short stories and it is giving yeah. me time to write some stories to besides the poems this happened so, some two years back yes so i uh, i have your you know i'm showing everyone your this uh, the missing rib uh you can see the missing rib sachida here is your missing rib yeah i i can see i can see you yeah uh, that is that is of course my <laughs> single uh, most important a, uh, work because it collects you know, uh, most of my collection in fact after yeah, that this I is a collection another book yeah 73 to 2015 collection right sachida uh, yeah so the yeah, let yeah, me let, yeah, me, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let, let me start with your words you know and uh, then i would uh, like you to uh, read what, what you see now on the screen is uh, yeah. you know my uh, poetry in malayalam a very similar collection Lovely. which goes uh, into more than 1000 pages uh, that's my, my collected poetry up to 2015 after which i have my three more books yes my god wonderful wonderful sachida 
so 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 let me begin with uh, you know what you call i'm i'm going to read your poem and then you will read your poems you say okay. in a poem you say in a poem title i am a language and today yeah. we need your language sachida you say i am a language a language of lines and colors between the real and the unreal in this language the sky is inside the bird and the leaves and peaks are themselves birds do you feel like birds at home with this note please uh, read your poems okay I'm, i'll do i'll i'll read a poem in malayalam in between and uh, i'll begin uh, with uh, some of my uh, very recent uh, poems recent uh, poems because these are poems uh, in fact two of them have not been even published in the original and uh, these are translations and the, this these are not directly related to the present situation but i think somewhere it connects somewhere it connects you know because connects, it speaks yeah. about uh, uh, being away uh, being solitary so i'll begin with those two poems which seem to have please something sir. to do please. with uh, the present please situation sir. Yeah. yes sir. so you will begin with the malayalam poem first you know my Should first I? choice yeah. is all yeah my first you know you know that i always love your malayalam poem i have a series of things <laughs> many oh, things to hear yeah. from you <laughs> i'll i'll do that i i'll read a poem uh, which is um, which is an early poem in fact that was one of my first poems published somewhere in 1969 Uh, like but you know the poem has a particular rhythm and that's why i thought yeah, i should yeah, read please, that please. so that people know yeah. the uh, rhythm of the malayalam language uh, uh, and many people uh, from english yeah. Yeah. and many people uh, from english and maybe the new generation yeah, they don't know that you are pioneer of starting in modernity or after modernity in malayalam literature and also indian literature yeah. so th- this is very significant poem you know we are going to hear from you yeah അഞ്ചു സൂര്യൻ എൻ ചോരയിലുണ്ടൊരു സൂര്യൻ കുങ്കുമഗന്ധം വിതറി ചെങ്കനൽ ചെറ്റും ചിതറി കത്തും തരുണാരുണ ചഞ്ചല സൂര്യൻ എൻ കൺകളിലുണ്ടൊരു സൂര്യൻ നീലി മയിമയിൽ നിവർത്തി നീലി പീലി വിടർത്തി നൃത്തം ചെയ്യും പേലവ നീല സൂര്യൻ എൻ അസ്ഥിയിലുണ്ടൊരു സൂര്യൻ മജ്ജയുരുക്കി ഒരുക്കി മഞ്ഞ ജ്വാലയൊഴുക്കി മങ്ങി തെളിയുമൊരിത്തിരി മഞ്ഞ സൂര്യൻ എൻ നാടിയിലുണ്ടൊരു സൂര്യൻ പുണ്ണു പിടിച്ചു വെളുത്തും കണ്ണിമ കൂടി നരച്ചും കൂനി വിറച്ചു വിളർത്തു തളർന്നൊരു വെള്ള സൂര്യൻ എൻ പ്രാണനിലുണ്ടൊരു സൂര്യൻ മരണം പോലെ കറുത്തും മഞ്ഞു കണക്കു തണുത്തും ശൂന്യതയുടെ ഗന്ധം താവിയ ശ്യാമള സൂര്യൻ ദിസ് അബൌട്ട് ഫൈവ് സൺസ് യുനോ വൺ മൈ ബ്ലഡ് വൺ ഇൻ മൈ ഐസ് വൺ മൈ ബോൺസ് വൺ ഇൻ മൈ നെർവ്സ് ആൻഡ് വൺ ഇൻ മൈ ലൈഫ് ബ്രത്ത് ആൻഡ് ഓൾ ഓഫ് ദം ഹാവ് ഡിഫറെന്റ് കളേഴ്സ് യെസ് വണ്ടർഫുൾ i don't think that you translate your poems into english because simultaneously it seems to us that you write english you know it's like you know you speak with multiple tongues with equal ease you know how does it happen such a that we would like to hear from you yeah it was an accident like uh, many other things that happened in my life because uh, some other people had translated my poetry to begin with i mean when i was quite young i was not very happy with those translations and then i thought why don't i try my hand myself and then i found uh, to my surprise or dismay that uh, perhaps my translation was slightly better than the translations that others had done and that was the beginning and then there were demands from various kinds of journals uh, in english for uh, my translations of my poetry and then i began to translate my poems myself for there are quite a few poems which i have not translated which are which will stay only in malayalam because they are very local they have a lot of uh, very local references and uh, culture specific things in them so i have not dared translate them but i think some more than 60 percentage of my poetry i have uh, translated into english then it became a kind of habit once i write a poem well after a while i also translate that Yeah. So, but, so for instance, you know, like uh, Osip Mandelstam says, the noise of the time, 
and now today when we are at home we are dealing with the silence of the time so sachida how would you respond to asif mandel's times experience of the noise of the time and this you know silence of our time how would you yeah. any point any yeah, yeah, point in mind many, <laughs> many poems on now voices and noises too um, yeah, yeah. You know, No, what I am discovering actually is the very opposite. That you know, even when the world seems silent, it is not silent because now, uh, sitting in my room in Delhi, I am able to hear the the calls of so many different kinds of birds. I am able to uh, to hear the crickets for the first time, whom I have which I have yeah. not heard for some time. So this My silence is also full of uh, you know various kinds of extremely subtle voices, and uh, listening to them, I feel that well. uh these these noises are certainly better than many of the human noises that unfortunately we often hear yeah, yeah. so the <laughs> next poem next poem seems like coming from you know the silence of the silence of the poetry perhaps so let's see yeah so what is the next poem in english i would or in malayalam uh no i don't have i don't have that in english i'll i'll read another poem which which may have you know something to do with uh, well with, the, with this whole question of language and uh, yeah. uh, sounds um I, i'll read two poems which are uh, you know which are very recent well, such like, such 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 just yeah minutes. just a moment yeah just a moment you know that i love this stammer poem you are a stammer yeah. poem so if yeah, you have yeah, a yeah. stammer poem kindly bring it up because i'm just a stammering you know at instagram and for you a stammer is a language language of poets you know language of the society I love that okay. poem. You know. <laughs> uh, uh, so you want me to read that? Yeah, the stammer poem. I, I think you know, um, people online and people who are live would love to hear you know the voice of the stammering, and and this is yeah, a very I poetic voice. I think I think I have it. Yeah, I, I have the poem. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Thank you. Just looking for. It. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. Um, just looking for it because it was suddenly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. This is the poem, Stammer. Um, it is from this book, uh, Misplaced Objects. Yeah. Stammer is no handicap. It is a mode of speech. Stammer is the silence that falls between the word and its meaning. just as lameness is the silence that falls between the word and the deed let stammer precede the language or succeed it is it only a dialect or a language itself these questions make the lingus stammer each time we stammer we are offering a sacrifice to the god of meanings when a whole people stammer stammer becomes their mother tongue just as it is with us now wow. god too must have stammered when he created man that is why all the words of man carry different meanings that's why everything he utters from his prayers to his commands stammers like poetry Wow, this is fantastic! Then, so, so uh, I, I think you know, I, I love this, you know, line when the God is also stammering. You know, <laughs> this is yeah. how, when did you write this poem, stammer? You know, what was the context of stammering? Did you stammer yourself? Or you were thinking about the voice of the poetry in a stammering. <laughs> yeah, in fact, in, in, I have quite a few poems on language. Recently, in Malayalam, yeah. somebody has published an anthology, a collection of my poems on language alone, and yeah. this also comes from you know a kind of contemplation on language. You know, once upon a time, I had. Uh, Uh, very much like George Steiner's book uh, about silence, and from and from that day, I have been thinking a lot about language and silence. And stammer is something that comes in between language and silence. 
and i have i often feel that we are never unable never able to express ourselves completely in poetry even if we want to of course we go on revising rewriting but even then something remains unsaid so there is uh, a stammer perhaps any an inaudible stammer in the very art of poetry and uh, that's what made me write this poem ultimately even though it has also some kind of a social context you know uh, when we use a uh, all people social context in a time Stammer. nobody is able to tell the truth completely yes yeah yeah, yeah. So, so so when you speak truth to the power do you stammer because you never stammer you 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 say truth directly to the power <laughs> how does yeah, that happen may, may, maybe for others i don't but i feel that well i have this is not the poem i wanted to write i wanted to write something better i wanted to uh, i wanted it to be more complete and more perfect uh, this feeling i, I it, it keeps haunting me and and that that's what actually drives me from one poem to another i'm i'm trying to uh, you know write the, the 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 best possible poem i ever can yeah so the best poem well, we are we, we are delighted to hear that your best poem is still in the making <laughs> that's a new, that's that's a news today uh, for all of us in the country we look forward to sachida yeah sure sure yeah sachida i am quoting i am quoting, quoting you know uh, murari mukhopadhyay of bengal you know in one of your yeah. essays imaginary community you yeah. cited his poem murari mukhopadhyay of bengal and yeah. since we are facing very unprecedented moment today and while quoting him you were talking about other poets and also the life of poetry in general and yeah. you quoted him and i i'm i'm reading a few lines from that poem love when in love do not become the moon if you can come as the sun i will take its heat and light up the dark forest so such is yeah, yeah. when you are in love when you are in love how do you deal with the moon or the sun <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah 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 indeed you know because these are dark times and uh, yeah. you know it was uh, bertolt brecht who had uh, asked will there be singing in dark times and answered yeah. yes there will be singing about uh, dark times, dark times yeah. perhaps all of us are singers of dark times in some sense and many of my poems also refer to this darkness even though by singing we also you know bring some light into uh, the darkness that is the poet's way of uh, you know illuminating the dark yeah so please read a poem on you know both in the light uh, i call it you know light of the darkness you know let's let's hear the light of the darkness <laughs> <laughs> let me let any, me read any, this new poem so uh, may, maybe yes, they have something uh, about all that you know these are these are very yeah. very recent no and problem, fresh sir. yeah no yeah uh, the first is on this earth <laughs> we landed on earth from different stars that's why we speak different languages each word carries the aura of the memories of the stars we left in sleep we travel to those glittering homes there we speak to our forefathers like geckos that know every one of its walls we wake up to discover it's stardust on our skins the second part from which yes. star did you come i ask watching the blue dust on her shoulders at dawn she stares jealous at the red dust on my chest we are now characters in some science fiction even our heads do not look human three wow as we die we return to the stars we left we will forget our sojourn on earth we will float in space as weightless souls until we get another body and another language for yeah. i want to be reborn on earth this time as a tree you will be a bird perched on its bough i will recognize you by the blue dust on your wings and you me with the red dust on my bark this wow. time we won't quarrel i will exchange my fruits for your song there won't be humans to see or hear it butterflies only butterflies only that's lovely that lovely such as butterflies yeah. and 
So, which star did you come from? <laughs> I mean, like any star, you know, we are just trying to figure out which star you come from. <laughs> yeah, I do not know. What is your zodiac sign? I like imagine I have come from some other planet. Yes. <laughs> what is your zodiac sign? You know, I mean, like maybe you know some people uh, uh, who are on uh, you know live, they would like to know which star, which zodiac sign, you know, in a poetic language. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, the pole, so, so, so. No, not suddenly from a star far away, not from the pole star, must be somewhere near the earth, maybe Mars, maybe some star that we can really reach, some, some star we have access to. <laughs> so I'm taking you back to, to, back to you know, Kerala, because Kerala is doing a wonderful work, you know, fighting this virus also, given the history yeah. of Kerala, you know, social commitment. Uh, so I'm taking you back to your village, you know. And and reminded of your village poem. So anything in Malayalam would you like to share with us about your village, about the butterflies in your village? Uh, I'm, I'm I'm sorry because I have to look for them because I had arranged a few poems which I have. With please, me. please please continue with that. You know, yeah, I, I'm yeah, disrupting yeah, your I'll, order. I'll, I'll, Maybe yeah, in the I'll next time, to, yeah, if we have multiple uh, rounds, you know. Uh, now losing time looking for poems in my shelf. So okay. I'll just read another poem, which is also very, uh, very recent, actually. I wrote it, I think, three or four days back. Uh, and this is the translation. Please, please it's also about loneliness. Uh, it's called Alone. Okay. I sit alone in my room and look out the window to make sure the world is still there. There stands a grown-up tamarind tree, a swing on one of its lower branches, and a boy on it, swinging higher and higher. The tree stands firm, careful the boy doesn't fall. A calf and a cat watch the scene with raised tails. The boy's dad is reading a newspaper. It carries a girl's photo. The two children have similar faces. But that girl is dead. The life that has left her is on the branch of the tamarind tree. It is watching with excitement its living brother on the swing. I am alone in the room and looking out the window to make sure the world is, st is still there. A horse is speeding outside. On it is a hunter who beautifies himself with young men's blood. Every day, like the sun, earth trembles beneath its hooves. There is fresh blood on its mane, blood that moves on a swing. I sit alone in the room. The world sits alone outside. The bangled bow of a laburnum offers me a bouquet from the window. There is wow. the life of a child on its crotch. That is my life. That bouquet falls on my body. A breeze gently moves it, as if it were a swing, as if I were a child sitting on it, on a tamarind tree, in my village compound, south side of my house, north side of death. Wonderful. This is the point. Which is about death and loneliness and, you know, being, a, being such alone such a, somewhere inside. Yeah. yeah. Sajida, could you, could you make a distinction between being alone and solitude? Uh, because poets and writers have been encountering this experience of being alone and at the same time the sound of solitude, being in solitude. What is it? Yeah, yeah in fact, you know, Pablo Neruda often used to say that uh, uh, he loves to be solitary sometimes and he also loves to be among the people at other times and i think uh, most of us uh, poets uh, uh, love those things you know sometimes we want to be left alone to be to meditate to think to write and and after that we want to go back go back to the people to 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 tell them what we have discovered during those moments of meditation and of uh, creation i i'll read another sure. poem uh, meanwhile please, please. Uh, you know yeah. uh, uh, you know, this is also uh, not an old poem. It's a rather recent poem. It's called Women. Uh, because this poem came to me when I found that, you know, most of the major struggles in the world are now led by uh, women. It could, it could be women. a girl who speaks about environment or it could be, you know, a, a struggle by workers. It could be a struggle yes. against, uh, against the rapists. Uh, uh, yeah. So uh, all, all kinds of struggles are led yes. by women. So 
when i yeah. thought of uh, women as the real uh, heroines of our time and, and this is kind not, of tribute if, yeah. and if i'm not wrong in, in malayalam literature you coined a particular word for women literature and women writer yeah you do i you, i i do have quite a uh, we do have quite a strong uh, you know kind of uh, yeah. writing by women and uh, i was in some way responsible for introducing uh, the a, a, a particular term for that kind of yeah, writing yeah, or to write yeah, the introduction to the first major feminist first. writer in malayalam by the yeah, way yeah, yeah, yeah. that's what we like. yeah so please please can you share the point yeah shall i yeah yes one woman walks in a hurry sobbing a house with faded paint on her head one woman goes on waiting at a railway station where no train stops one woman with a halo of glow worms walks in the dark towards the stars one woman makes sure her wings are in place before she launches herself into a flight one wow. woman steps into a cornfield in drought with a rain cloud on her shoulder one woman sings a song making a fruit tree in autumn burst into blossoms one woman glints like a spark of fire in the ashes of her little house set on fire one woman scoops up her baby and flees to the border watching a fighter jet swoop down one woman sharpens the letters of the alphabet and pulls out the fangs of the enveloping dark one woman closes the door of her house with a bang walks out and hums a medley on on the street one woman looks at the image of jesus on the cross and yells in agony son my darling son one uh. woman views her man on the panel in khajuraho and finds her pleasure herself one woman her muscles hardening as i look on turns into a goddess of iron and fire one woman sharpens her sickle again and again rubbing it against a rock in a forest stream one woman climbs up a tank and offers flowers to soldiers with the moon smile one woman wow. tired of her life on earth leaves for space in a vehicle made of her own bones one man oh. stands aghast on the road side too scared to cross the road right <laughs> so contrasting you know, the woman's courage with the man's coward is here in, in some <laughs> sense <laughs> yeah it yeah. is it is true uh, the way we witness violence of the women and now we are yeah. at home home has always been a privileged place for women but now look at uh, home has become so political <laughs> today so political is <laughs> yeah, only the center for us, is the only center for us all of us yeah so, so please please read you know we are still have time to go so kindly yeah. read a poem you know maybe in malayalam or maybe in english you know whatever yeah, you like maybe, uh, yeah yeah I'll, i'll 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 read a poem called salt Uh, so, which was written actually uh, you know when we were uh, thinking of us uh, in, in some sense celebrating the dandi march it's called okay. salt jay 90 years ago we extracted from the sweat of the oceans ceaseless waves a handful of salt a blossom jay. of tender white in a lean raised hand jay. one hand suddenly turned into 6000 manacled ones millions of fists raised against an empire where the sun never set from that day truth in our land came to be called imprisoned salt from allah khuda messiah that salt wow. was everything to us the prophetess who emerged from the sea form and arrived in the kitchen the white winged angel the eternal savior of our dreams a handful of liberty a handful of equality a handful of love a handful of kindness a buddha of salt today once again we raise a flag of white salt in the background of the oceans dark turquoise blue the fleeting vision 
of dark haired freedom slipping off from our little hands the snowy elaboration of a fairy quality that we still keen our ears for a calloused hand with the scent of sweat our flesh and tears have a handful of the dark and salt of justice studded with the sand grains of rebellion that gandhi had raised in dandi 90 years ago wow fantastic so sachida you know it was really great having you today i hope you enjoyed this instagram poetry reading <laughs> yeah thank you so much thank you so much for introducing me to uh, uh, the, this session thank you shri yeah. and, and you have been always kind you have been always kind <laughs> no such is such is that we have learned you know my poetry is perhaps uh, you know improvisation of learning that i have learned from you such is it's is such is that is from all of us you know we we are having 64 poets we are going on live such is that uh, from yeah. each one of us uh, we really salute you our eternal savior of the poetry such is that with you around we do not fear any virus we do not fear even our solitude look forward yeah, to having yeah. you again sure, sure yeah we do not yeah thank you kitab khan and thank you novels collective thank you thank you ashini thank you sir thank you thank you you can go offline sachita yeah so here was sachita sachita nandan the great sachita nandan i mean like sachita nandan i i call him Uh, eternal savior of the poem poetry he saves the soul soul of the poetry and before i take your leave let me read a poem uh, which uh, sachida loves a lot uh, from my collection again uh, again my grandfather's imaginary typewriter i hope you enjoy this poem he ended his poem with a salt poem and also a very strong poem about women so i'm going to read this uh, my my mother's hair pen a poem dedicated to women Years ago, years ago, I looked like them and lived with them in their camps, like a strayed winter and a traitor summer. I took a pledge. I took a pledge. Iron will melt in our blood, drop by drop. We will become free, and inch by inch, we will become monuments. One Friday evening, I returned home, panting and shriveled. finding me without a penny my mother offered me her only hair pin and a rusted old lamp and told me not to worry about old clothes i knew i knew i looked like her and belonged to her i took a pledge i won't fear a strange shadows of war every sunday i hunted for secret treasures pried open icy casket with her hair pin and freed butterflies from the bondage of frozen slumber one monday morning one monday morning the wicked ogres came disguised as hermits and granted me divine forest rites advice to separate snails from caterpillars i flip flop my conscience tossed her hair pin and hair rubbed the roasted old lamp once twice thrice i kept rubbing the spooky lamb now now i don't remember when i became my own ghost thank you friends for having me here and thank you for supporting poetry live we had two wonderful poets in waiting priya sarukai whose video we are going to upload shortly and thakkar ji with the thakkar ji thank you very much